discover the unusual relationship between Queen Elizabeth and Nelson Mandela. Queen Elizabeth enjoyed a warm friendship with South Africa's President Nelson Mandela, who once joked about her weight on a visit to Buckingham Palace, unheard of liberty attesting to the strong bond between the freedom fighter and the monarch. The two global icons often spoke to each other by phone and used their first names as a mutual sign of respect and affection. There are a few stories, but what stands out is when Nelson Mandela visited Buckingham Palace once, approaching the Queen, Mr. Mandela had a very fabulous sense of humor. So he walked up to the Queen, and when he saw her he said, Elizabeth, you've lost weight, and the Queen burst out laughing. I think he was the only person in the world who could comment on the Queen's weight and get away with it. Queen Elizabeth II, the United Kingdom's longest-serving monarch, died on Thursday at Balmoral Castle in Scotland after reigning for 70 years, she was 96 years old. Nelson Mandela By his admission, Nelson Mandela was an Anglophile, and in the years after his release from prison, he cultivated a close relationship with the Queen. He hosted her in South Africa and visited her in England, taking particular delight in exploring Buckingham Palace, the Nelson Mandela Foundation said in a statement. They also talked on the phone frequently, using their first names with each other as a sign of mutual respect as well as affection, the foundation said. The special name that Mandela had for the queen was Matlalapula, which means to come with rain in the indigenous Setswana language. During a banquet hosted by Mandela in 1997 for then Prince Charles, who is now King Charles III, Mandela explained the reasoning behind coining this special name for the queen. We cherish fond memories of the royal state visit to South Africa by Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth in 1995. We regard it as a watershed in the historical relationship between our countries, now firm partners for peace and prosperity, Mandela had said. As a token of our affection to Her Majesty, we conferred on her the name Matlalapula because her visit coincided with torrential rains that we had not experienced in a long time. With the threat of El Nino, we would have welcomed her presence in this period even more. But we can rest content that a part of her soul and her magic is with us today, he added. Fondly known to South Africans as Madiba, Mandela spent 27 years in prison before leading his country from white minority rule to a multiracial democracy. He died at the age of 95 in 2013. Mandela received numerous civic awards from British institutions, including the British Order of Merit from the Queen, the Order of St. John, and an honorary doctorate in law. For Madiba, the clan name by which Mandela is fondly known, it was important that the former colonial power in Southern Africa should be drawn into cordial and productive relations with the newly democratic Republic of South Africa, the Nelson Mandela Foundation said. For the same reason, South Africa becoming a full member of the Commonwealth again after its long apartheid-era absence had a special significance, the Foundation said. The Foundation also recalled how Mandela would ask anyone from Britain or anyone who had visited Britain the question, and did you get to meet the Queen? He would then take great delight in sharing stories of his encounters with her. The foundation said, as it shared condolences with the royal family and wished King Charles III strength and fortitude as he takes on new responsibilities at this difficult time. Meanwhile, South African President Cyril Ramaphosa also expressed his profound and sincere condolences to King Charles III. Her Majesty was an extraordinary and world-renowned public figure who lived a remarkable life. Her life and legacy will be fondly remembered by many around the world. The Queen's commitment and dedication during her 70 years on the throne remain a noble and virtuous example to the entire world, Ramaphosa said in a statement. Looking at letters that former President Mandela had sent to the Queen, recalling about the great statesman that Her Majesty respected enormously, he recollected and added that South Africa's thoughts and prayers are with the royal family, the government, and the people of the United Kingdom as they mourned their immense loss. It was in Cape Town, marking her 21st birthday in 1947, that the then Princess Elizabeth pledged that her whole life, whether it be long or short, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. The British Empire soon crumbled, 
but Elizabeth managed to maintain a regal, if not ceremonial position as the head of the Commonwealth, the 54 nations of mostly previous British colonies. The Queen lived a long and consequential life, fulfilling her pledge to serve until her very last breath at the age of 96, almost the same age as Nelson Mandela before he died, Cape Town Mayor Jordan Hill Lewis said in a statement. She was an exemplary leader of the kind, seldom seen in the modern era. As Queen, Elizabeth was seen as endorsing the birth of democracies in Africa, where previously blacks had been denied basic rights, including the vote. When in glittering crowns she danced with new African leaders in the 60s and visited their capital cities, she bestowed legitimacy on their governments. When white minority rule finally fell in South Africa in 1994, Elizabeth welcomed Nelson Mandela as a world leader. Her openly warm friendship with Mandela was enjoyed by him, and it gave her a new relevance. In the years after his release from prison, Mandela cultivated a close relationship with the Queen. He hosted her in South Africa and visited her in England, taking particular delight in exploring Buckingham Palace. They also talked on the phone frequently, using their first names with each other as a sign of mutual respect as well as affection. For Madiba, Mandela's clan name, it was important that the former colonial power in southern Africa should be drawn into cordial and productive relations with the newly democratic Republic of South Africa. For the same reason, South Africa becoming a full member of the Commonwealth again after its long apartheid era absence had a special significance, it said. Fellow radical anti-apartheid fighter, Anglican Archbishop of Cape Town Desmond Tutu also enjoyed good relations with the Queen, and his foundation paid tribute to her. To note it all, Nelson Mandela was the closest African president to Queen Elizabeth who could relate and crack jokes with her that much. Thanks for watching, guys. Make sure to subscribe for more amazing content. Don't forget to like and share.